All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Football Podcast. Today here, me and Nick are going to be doing our NFL Mock Draft 4.0, a first-rounder. The bulk of free agency is in the books. There's still a lot of guys that will make impacts for the years to come, still available, but the bulk of it is done. A lot of big trades are in the books as well, so we're going to be a fir- doing a first-rounder here, a lot to get into. Uh, we will dissect the trades when we arrive at the select pick for what was included in that trade. First overall, though, the Jags. I have them going Aiden Hutchinson. I think as a Jags fan, I was really happy with what we did in free agency. I think we may have overpaid for a few guys, but we added talent. That was the main goal. I think Ikeem Aquanu and Evan Neal are still great picks here. I think if you put one of them at guard, you could really transform this whole line. But I think Aiden Hutchinson, right now, he seems like the best pick. Yeah, I like the pick of Hutchinson here. He had a very strong combine, you know, a 4 7, 40 yard dash. I really am impressed with him in general. I think he would be a great fit for the Jaguars. You know, they need a lot of help on a lot of different spots on the field. I think Hutchinson at edge rusher would be a great pickup for them at number one overall pick. I think he'd be a real, real wrecker in the NFL. And I think he has real potential to be dominant at the next level. And this would be a great pick for the Jags. Yeah, Hutchinson, violent hands. He, uh, you know, he struggled a bit against Georgia, but he was relentless off the edge, a top notch playmaker. He shined against Ohio State. I think he almost had four sacks in that game. If, it, if he didn't have one on the stat sheet, he clearly made up for it. With pressures, he was so good throughout the year in the team's biggest games. Moving to number two, who do you have the Lions going with who need a lot of help in a lot of different areas? Yeah, the Lions could use a lot of help, but I think the one spot they need the most help is edge rusher. And I got them taking Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. Very talented player, former five-star recruit, ESPN top 100 player. Had some questionable times at Oregon, definitely some injury struggles, but such a talented edge rusher, pound for pound, just an incredible player. And the Lions here get a really talented edge rusher. And that's a part of the team that needs a lot of work. Like you said, the Lions have a lot of holes, but edge rusher, that edge rushing core currently is just so poor. And picking up a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, Thibodeau at number two is just an, a can't-miss pick for me. Very talented player. This is a great fit in or, in Detroit. Talk about relentless off the edge. KT does that to a T. Great length. I like his size. The bend off the edge. I like what he does as an interior run stopper as well. KT, a lot of people have him falling. Um, you don't really see a lot of mock drafts nowadays with him going to the Lions or to the Jags, really. I think KT is really being undervalued here late in the stretch. I do think he's still a, to not, uh, you know, a top-notch player for a team to go with coming off the edge. And the Lions, they do need a lot of help in that area. Number three, the Texans. They did make a big trade. Deshaun Watson's finally out. We'll get to that later. But looking at this big board, looking at the roster, I don't know. They could really go anywhere. I think Ike Mokwanu, Evan Neal, they're the top selections, I think, here at tackle because they're going to put Titus Howard at guard. Um, Laramie Tunsil, we don't know if he's coming back to play football or not. Evan Neal, though, I like what he does. He was a brick at Alabama. He's big. He's athletic. You know, 6'7", 350. He's terrific as a run blocker, I think, as a pass defender as well. I like what he does overall. I think number seven on PFS Big Board is a bit of a stretch. I think it's kind of disrespectful, but Evan Neal, he should be one of the top five. Yeah, I think this is a great pick for the Texans. You know, they need help everywhere. They got rid of the Watson headache, and now they kind of can start to build this team how they want to build it. We have questions whether or not Laramie Tensel is coming back. There have been a lot of question marks with him since the trade when he arrived in Houston. I think Evan Neal is a great pick here. You know, he protected Bryce Young, the Heisman winning quarterback, was the standout on that on what was a pretty iffy Alabama offensive line throughout the year, really kind of stood out, very, 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 very notable player on the offensive line. I think this is a great pick for the Texans. They could use a help anywhere. You'll see when we get to their later pick in the first round, you know, they could really use help on all parts of the field. But I think when you see a guy like Evan Neal at number three, you have to take him. Very, very solid offensive lineman. This is a great pick for the Texans. Number four, the Jets, they went offense with their first four picks last year. They have two picks here in the top ten. Do you see them going defense, or are they going to continue to get Zach Wilson some help? So I do think Zach Wilson needs help, but I think the Jets are going to focus on defense in the first round here. I got them taking Kyle Hamilton, the safety from Notre Dame. Very strong safety, best safety in this class. Very talented player. Very, very great athlete. Very talented in that regard. I like what he can do on the field. I think he had a great career at Notre Dame. Very strong, very impressive performance. And, you know, the Jets could use a safety like this. And at number four, I think this is a really good pick for them. I like Kyle Hamilton a lot. He's my favorite safety in this class. He's the best safety in this class, pound for pound. This would be a great pick for the Jets. Yeah, 6'4", 220, Hamilton, great size. He plays like a line. He has the size of a linebacker. He has the speed of a DB. Great instincts, very rangy. Um, I agree. Or he's out on the big board at number two. And positional value, he might drop. But I think four to the Jets. Robert Sala would love to have a player like this. As would everybody, Hamilton, he's going to be an all-pro player for years. Uh, he's terrific. He's not just the favorite safety of yours in the draft. He's probably the favorite defender. He is mine for sure. I love Kyle Hamilton. He's terrific. Looking at number five. The Giants, they have two picks here that can really turn things around. 
I have them I, going IT McQuanu. They would love if he falls to number five. He's an elite run blocker. Some websites have even said he'll automatically be the top run blocker in the NFL. He's that good. He's that fluid, uh, you know, as a blocker. I think he's terrific. Giants at five. This would be A+. plus. Yeah, he's the best run blocker in this draft by far. Very talented player. Had a great career at North Carolina State. Jets, the Giants really need help on the offensive line. The run blocking, you know, Saquon Barkley could really use that help if he's if he is going to stick around in New York and is the future. Daniel Jones could use some help as well if they're going to continue to use him at quarterback. I think Aquano is the pick here. Very solid offensive lineman. I like this move from the Giants. Number six, Carolina. Um, they really tried hard to land a veteran quarterback. Doesn't look like it's really going to happen. Do you think they go ahead and just draft one, or do they attend to the other needs on this roster? I don't think there is enough talent in the quarterbacks available in this year's draft class to use a top 10 pick on one. So I have them taking Charles Cross, the offensive lineman from Mississippi State, was a very, very strong career, very great in the pass block department. They threw the ball a ton at Mississippi State. Will Rogers had a great year. There are some questions about his run blocking ability because, you know, Mike Leach's offense, they don't run the ball a whole lot in Starkville. So that is definitely a little bit to be desired. But offensive line is a glaring, glaring need for the Panthers. They definitely need to beef that offensive line up. And Charles Cross at six is such a talented player. You have to take him at six here for me. This is the, this is an easy pick for the Panthers. He has a lot of reps, a lot of tape in the pass block category. I think this would be a good pick for them. Their offensive line was so bad last year. I thought Sam Arnold was not as bad at times last year. When he had protection, their offensive line is not good. I'm not a fan of them trying to trade the franchise for a veteran quarterback that does not fix the issues one bit. Charles Cross or someone else on the O-line, whoever's there, it has to be the pick. This this unit up front really needs to get boosted big time. Kind of felt like a reach by Matt Rule and the rest of the Panthers organization by trying to trade the franchise for a quarterback. So Cross, I think that would be a better pick here at number six. At number seven, again, the Giants. I have him going Trayvon Walker. He's a high riser as of late after the combine. Now, I don't think that he is the third of best edge available, but he's really a high riser. I think his combine performance is really going to want team. It's going to make teams want to take him early here. You know, four, five, 140, a 35-inch vertical, 10-inch broad jump. His athletic skills were insane. Um, you know, of course, he kind of struggles with shed blocks. His tackling's not great. Limited moves. Production wasn't very good at Georgia. But again, you're playing with a bunch of Bunch of five-star guys. Production has never been great at Georgia for defensive players. It's a team effort at Georgia. Um, but his tape certainly sh- he has plenty of bright spots. High motor. He's versatile. Lines up inside, outside. He's got nice length. And then again, that elite athleticism. Trayvon Walker seems like an ideal pick at seven for the Giants. Yeah, Trayvon Walker is one of those guys that has risen up people's boards a lot since his combine performance. Look at him at 6'5", 272. You know, very talented player. Can play inside, outside, like you said. It was hard to get the spotlight on you when you play in a defense in a defense like Georgia, who was just so dominant in every position on that defensive side of the ball. But when you look at the tape, you know, they put the team effort in. I'm a little concerned about his tackling ability, and there's a couple edge rushers that I think would be just a little bit ahead of him that are still on the board. But you know, when you look at those stats, a team's going to make a flashy pick like that and pick him early based off just off those combine stats and some other things. I think this would work well for the Giants, and I could see this working out long term pretty well for the Giants. Might be a bit of a reach, but Trayvon Walker at seven makes sense to me. High upside edge rusher to number seven. Who do you have the Falcons going with at eight? The Falcons, they were heavy in on Deshaun Watson. They didn't end up landing him. A lot of people are wondering what the future is there. But I have taken Derek Stingley, the cornerback out of LSU. Had a great year in 2019 during that uh, national championship winning season. Has been a little bit struggled since then with injuries. Hasn't played a whole lot. Another guy that was a high recruit out of high school. Very talented player. I love his film when he is playing. Very talented player. The Falcons need a lot of help on the defensive side of the ball. Derek Stingley Jr. seems to be a great pick for the next cornerback, and I really think this would be a good fit at number eight. Yeah, now his tape, you haven't seen much of it the last two years with those injuries, but he's sticky as they come in man coverage. I wish he worked out at the combine. I believe he's going to participate in the pro day, but he's got great numbers. I'm sure if they test, they'll blow you. They'll blow your mind. He's, I'm sure he runs. He runs a very good 40 time. His vertical. I'm sure they're great. I don't need to look at the numbers. I see on tape what I see. Stanley's very sticky in man coverage. Him and A.J. Terrell, I think, would be a pretty solid corner duo for the Falcons. Um, Atlanta, I wasn't the biggest fan of them going after Deshaun Watson either. I thought the offense would have been pretty solid. But this is a team who needs help all over the place. The offensive line needs to step up. The defense has no depth, no talent. Give them all your first-round picks for a quarterback really wouldn't have changed that, especially when you already have a quarterback, even though his time is certainly coming to a close. I think Derek Stingley would be – an A-plus pick. The Falcons should, should be very happy with that on draft day. Moving to number nine, we're going to go ahead and dissect this Seattle-Denver trade. John Schneider, the GM, he has for years been one of the top GMs in the NFL, but the last couple of years, 
no. He really forced them into a corner here. Um, they kind of had no choice but to trade him. The, you know, Rashad Penny in the first round, Jordan Brooks, LJ Collier, a bunch of reaches year after year. None of the draft classes have really panned out for them as a whole either. So they had to get rid of the, um, Russell Wilson to get back assets. For example, the 10th overall pick should be theirs, but it's not because they gave up two first-rounders for a safety in Jamal Adams. Um, the moves in Seattle have not been good. Snyder backed them into a hole. They have no choice here but to try and go into a rebuilding phase, and that's what they do. They start things off with number nine. I think that Ahmad Gardner is the pick, another one of those uh, press man corners. He's also pretty sticky, but he's also pretty violent too. He's aggressive. He never allowed a TD in his college career. What are your thoughts on the Deshaun Watson, or not the Deshaun Watson, the Russell Wilson trade that is, and uh, what the future holds for Seattle? Yeah, Seattle's been a disaster the last few years. That trade for Jamal Adams makes zero sense to me, even to even now. Russell Wilson, it, it was clear it wasn't working there. The relationship had sour. They had to get rid of him to get a first round pick, the number nine pick in the draft. You know, that's good to grab from him. Denver needed a quarterback. This is a great move for them. I like the move for the Broncos a lot. I just don't know what Seattle's going to be doing long term. It looks like this will be a bit of a pretty significant rebuild. The questions at quarterback, there are questions all over the field. And people are saying they take a quarterback here at number nine. I just think that's a foolish decision. They got to wait a little bit and try and find somebody better. Amon Gardner, like you said, didn't give a single touchdown during his college career at Cincinnati. Very talented cornerback. I question the film a little bit against Alabama, but then again, you know, it's Alabama. It's tough to play against those talented wide receivers. I think Gardner's a great player at nine. I think this fits for Seattle. They have a lot of question marks. It's going to be a long rebuild in the Pacific Northwest, but taking a guy like Amon Gardner is a good start when you get a pick from Denver at number nine. Gardner was actually really good against Alabama, I thought. But, again, I think I agree. A QB here at nine, just not the right decision. You traded your quarterback away for picks to build the rest of the team. And drafting a quarterback here, it just wouldn't be the best decision there in a rebuild. Obviously, there's some guys out there that like Malik Willis that are very attractive, but I'm not a fan of it. I would not grade it very high if they did that. Um, it just it wouldn't make much sense. But John Schneider, I don't know what he's been doing the last couple of years. They, gave, they didn't give Wilson any help. They did not care one bit to attain that offensive line. And now they're hurting and suffering from it. Um, I don't know why they didn't make a single attempt ever to get some beef up front. Moving to number 10, though, the Jets, they're glad to um, get rid of a safety for a 10th overall pick. That's a phenomenal trade. It ended up working out very well for them. Who do you have the Jets taking a 10? I think the Jets are going to keep with this defensive theme, and I think George Karloff, it's the edge rusher out of Purdue, is the pick here. Had a very strong season in the Big Ten last year. Looked really good on that Purdue defensive line. I was very impressed with him. I like his, I like his size. You know, he's 6'3". 266. I think that's a good size for an edge rusher in the NFL. I really like what he can do. Very, very talented player. He's going to work hard for you. He's going to fight for every tackle. He's going to be on the field throughout the game. I really like Carl Offitz a lot. I think he fits really well with the Jets and Robert Sala as he kind of builds this defense and what is a good defensive mind at head coach for the New York Jets. A three down player of a high motor. He stayed in West Lafayette to play at Purdue and he had a very good season. Overlooked a lot, I would say, playing at Purdue, but he was terrific playing in the Big Ten. You're playing. Tough, physical offensive lineman on a weekly basis, and I think our offense would be a great pick at number nine. That's a player a lot of people don't know about, though. Moving to 11, Washington. They traded for Carson Wentz. I'm a bigger fan of this move because I think they only gave it, what was it, two second-round picks, I believe. Correct. I know they gave up, and, you know, um, I think that's much better than giving up three first-rounders like they wanted to do, maybe for a Watson or a Rodgers. I, don't, I wasn't really a big fan of that. I think this, even though they're taking on, like, $28 million in salary, they keep that first-round pick. They get a veteran quarterback. I think it was a pretty solid move. On that front, they were another team aggressively pursuing a veteran quarterback. They got one. I think the best way to help your new quarterback out is get him a wide receiver. Drake London, this guy is terrific. After the catch, he's a 50-50 ball jump artist, 6'5", 210. And he's coming back from that broken ankle. Um, great size. He's very physical after the catch. What he does to get the ball, you know, from a contested catch standpoint or making waves in the slot, Drake London is phenomenal. Yeah, I love the size and the, and the ability to be physical after the catch. You know, like you said, 6'3", 220, incredible size. I really like that. I really like what I saw from pre-injury at USC. This is a great fit for the commanders. You know, you want to give your new quarterback some weapons. And a guy like Drake London, that Carson Wentz gets to throw to, is a really great fit. I love London's speed. Like you said, the 50-50 ball factor, really there for Drake London. I think this is a great pick for the commanders and a really good way to start building this offense if Carson Wentz is the future in Washington. That's why I'm such a big fan of not giving up your first-round pick. Because they have a guy in Terry McLaurin. Dwami Brown was a good pick last year. Antonio Gibson at running back. They have a nice core on offense. They just needed a good quarterback. Taylor Henneke I thought was very solid. I even thought that he would potentially go be the Bucks option 
Uh, you know, of course, Brady's back, but I thought he was solid enough that he could really shine with a good, su- strong supporting cast, get a veteran. I think this offense is going to improve tremendously on top of that defense. It's pretty strong. Drake London would be a very good pick. Pretty solid offseason so far, I'd say, for Washington. Moving to number 12, Minnesota, um, Trent McDuffie at corner. They need to beast up, up their defense a good bit. What, a, what better way to do it than add a corner like McDuffie? He tackles with energy. He's pretty violent. He doesn't always wrap up, though, but he makes up for it with that athleticism and the violentness. He's got high IQ, really good length. I like Trent McDuffie, or he doesn't have great length, I should say, but he really makes up for it from an athletic standpoint. McDuffie, I think he'd be a good fit here in Minnesota. Yeah, I like his high football IQ. When you look at the Minnesota Vikings, a cornerback is going to be the pick here. It's either going to be Gardner McDuffie or Andrew Booth Jr. I think McDuffie is a better fit out of those players. Of course, Gardner's off the board now. I like McDuffie a lot. You know, worked really hard at Washington, put the effort in, looked really good in that cornerback room for Washington Huskies. I'm impressed by McDuffie. You know, the tackling is a bit of a question mark, but the guy's an athlete. He's going to put his effort in on the field. He's going to play hard, has a high football IQ, very talented player. I think this is a great pick for the Vikings, and it fits really well in Minnesota. As PFF states, Houston needs every position. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll grade the Deshaun Watson trade first. I think it was a great job by Nick Casero to get three first-round picks when they didn't have a lot of leverage because they knew everyone in the league knew he was never going to play there again. We've known that for a long time. I think both teams did a pretty good job here. But they got a great haul for him. It wasn't just three firsts. I think they got a second in there, a fourth as well. Great haul for the Texans. Now it's time to start rebuilding. I think the best way to start doing that is beef up this wide receiver room. They need help everywhere. I'm not a fan of what they have a receiver outside of Brandon Cooks. Nico Collins is solid, but they're just, there's no future really there. There's no talent. I think this would be a very good start to the draft or start to the rebuild, I guess you could say, for Houston by snagging Garrett Wilson and Evan Neal. Yeah, you look at the Texans, you know, they finally get rid of Deshaun Watson, which is a massive headache and a massive question mark in Houston. He wasn't going to play there again. That was obvious. It just was where he was going to go and what type of package they got back. Getting those those first-round draft picks is super valuable for a team like Houston who needs to rebuild. And grabbing a guy like Garrett Wilson at 13 is a really solid pick. You know, very talented wide receiver. Really great at Ohio State. Had a really strong career. This would be a great fit for Houston Texans. They seem to be committing to Davis Mills. If you're going to commit to a quarterback like Mills, you want to give him talent around him, someone that he can throw the ball to, someone that's going to make plays. Garrett Wilson is that guy. This is a great pick for the Houston Texans, and and that would cap off a really good season off season for them. You know, trade him, getting those picks, getting Evan Neal, a solid offensive lineman, and then getting Garrett Wilson in the first round. If I'm a Texans fan, I'm very happy with this. Wilson, elite body control. He's a phenomenal athlete, pinpoint route runner. Um, He's not. He doesn't have elite speed, but he's twitchy. Um, nice, solid size. Um, the body control again. The hands. Very solid wide receiver. I love watching Garrett Wilson play. I think uh, Houston would be glad to have him. Turning our attention to number fourteen, the Ravens. Where do you have Baltimore going? So I have them taking Jeremiah Johnson out of Florida State, my favorite player in this draft still, and that has not changed. His combine stats impressed me a little bit. I am I think he's a very solid player still. He had a great senior bowl. We've been saying that for a while. This 6'4", 254. He had a 4.58, 40-yard 4. 4. dash. Very impressed with that. Also had a 10-5 standing jump, a, a broad jump, sorry. I'm very impressed with him. I think this is a perfect fit for the Ravens. They could really use the help on the edge, and a guy like this falls to them. He has experience. He played at JUCO. He played at Georgia. He played at Florida State. He really stood out what was a terrible, terrible Florida State team this year. The shining star. I think this is a great pick for the Ravens, a match made in heaven. This works for me a lot at 14. Easy pick. Yeah, we both love Jermaine Johnson. He could probably crack the top 10. I won't say too much because you really said it all. But, yeah, he was great all around. He plays with so much confidence. He knows he's the best player on the field. Senior Bowl was terrific. Combine was pretty solid as well. Johnson, another one of those late high risers. I think this would be great in Baltimore who needs some future pass rushers. He just screams Baltimore Ravens. Um, the, Baltimore would love to have him, even though he's kind of on the tail end of the first round, according to the big board here. I disagree. I think top 15 is a good selection for Jermaine. Howie Roseman he might be the greatest GM ever. <laughs> they have three picks here in the first round. They traded Carson Wentz for the 16th overall pick, and Carson Wentz has now been traded again. So that's phenomenal. They haven't even used the pick yet, and he's on his second team. It was third team technically, but 15, 16, 19, the Eagles have a great shot right after making the playoffs to really beef up this roster and turn into a Super Bowl contender. Kicking things off at 15, though. I have them going Devin Lloyd. This is a top-notch linebacker. He made so many plays throughout the year. He's got great range, the football IQ, very fluid in coverage. You've seen him snag a pick six against Oregon in the Pac-12 title game. He uses that anticipation in the run game as well. Devin Lloyd from top to bottom is a great linebacker. 
there's a lot of guys who lean on athleticism to make plays. He leans on skills. He doesn't have screaming athletic ability, but his skills are really impressive. Yeah, Devin Lloyd's such a skillful linebacker. I really like what I see out of him, 6'2", 237. I really like him a lot. Had a very strong season at Utah, very great player in that in the Pac-12. Had a really strong game in the Pac-12 title game, like you said. I think Lloyd is a great fit here for the Eagles. With the amount of picks they have, they can really do a whole lot to their team and really beef up what was already a playoff roster, especially with the 15 and 16 back-to-back. I like Lloyd here at 15. Great add to linebacking court. This is a great fit for me. And the Eagles, like you said, they've done work some magic picking up all these picks. The pick from Indianapolis, it's worked out great for them. They have a real opportunity here to beef this roster up and be contending after making the playoffs last year. And what is a pretty weak NFC East, this is going to be a good draft for them. They have a lot of opportunities here. Devin Lloyd would be a great way to kick that off. Who do you have them going with at 16 to be his counterpart? So to be his counterpart, I'm looking at Andrew Booth Jr., the cornerback out of Clemson. I absolutely love this guy. Great film, really talented player. Clemson had a down year on the field this year, but he looked really good throughout the season. I'm really impressed by Andrew Booth Jr. I really like what he can do. Strong corner. I think this is a great fit for them. They could use some help in the cornerback room. It's not a glaring need, but when you have so many first-round picks, you can kind of take a move like this. This would be a great fit for me. I like Andrew Booth Jr. at 16 a lot. Moving to 17, the Chargers. Um, the Chargers, man, this is a ridiculous roster they're building up. Mike Williams is coming back. They traded for Quill Mack, added J.C. Jackson. I think Jordan Davis after his combine, I originally in my mock drafts, we were saying Jordan Davis or a linebacker, no Kobe Dean, I thought was the better pick at the time. But Jordan Davis after the combine, there's no way he makes it past number 17 here. The Chargers had one of the worst run defenses in the league last year. Guess what? Davis, that's all he does. He stops the run with ease. 4'7", 830, 32-inch vertical. He's 6'6", 341 pounds. Those are pretty insane numbers. I think he was, I think he was almost faster than Pat Mahomes. If not, he was right there next to him because that was a big – the meme of sorts that was trending on online. Jordan Davis to be that big to have that kind of athletic profile. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, looking at his stats in the combine, just it doesn't make any sense. Absolutely incredibly athletic player considering his size. I think this is a perfect fit for the Chargers. They have such a strong roster. They're really contenders in the AFC. And you bring a guy like Jordan Davis in that you could work on, develop to a star player. This is a great fit. I love this pick for the Chargers. This would be a very good fit. That leads us to 18. The Saints, they come up short as well in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. Where do you have them going here? So I think that quarterback is a question mark, but it looks like they're going to keep it with Jameis Winston and might as well give him some talent to help him out. So I think Jamison Williams, the wide receiver from Alabama, is the pick. Of course, you have the injury concerns. He went down in the national title game. Very concerned, concerning injury, but his numbers this past season speak for themselves. Super talented wide receiver. That big playability, that burst off the line. I'm super impressed with Jameson Williams. I think this is a perfect fit for the Saints. Give give your quarterback some weapons. Give him someone that can catch the ball, someone with great speed. And you look at Jameson Williams, he has all those attributes. This would be a great fit. Outside of Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, there's no talent on that offense. I've been saying that for a long time now. It doesn't matter who's that quarterback. I think it's going to be a big struggle for them. Add a slot burner in Jameson Williams. Michael Thomas's day becomes a lot easier. He just set a couple records a few years ago. So that would be scary for NFL defenses. This would be a great way to go. Of course, quarterback Malik Willis still out there. That would be a nice little option to go with, too. I'm really not sure where they'll go. I think this pick, though, is really down the quarterback or wide receiver. I think they should go receiver, but I think a quarterback is certainly very possible as well. Moving to 19, the Eagles, their third pick of this third round. I went with Chris Olave. I'm not really impressed with what they have in the receiving group. Devontae Smith, he's obviously going to be a star. Jalen Rager, though, he's not been very good. Greg Ward, a former quarterback, still on roster. Quez Watkins made some good plays last year, but they don't have anybody that screams we can't uh, to a defense that we can't defend you, you know? Um, I think if you get a lobby, put him out wide, phenomenal route runner. He impressed with his 40 time, too. It was a 4-3-9, three, three, I believe, um, official time. His 40 time certainly impressed us, but he's a, as fundamentally sound as they come. I think the Eagles would... Love to have him in their receiving core. Yeah, Alave is another player that had a really interesting combine and kind of impressed us, like you said, with that 40 time. He also had a 10 4 broad jump, you know, six foot 187. I think this would be a really good pick for the Eagles. You can't really go wrong here with the amount of first round picks they have. I think Alave would be a great addition to that wide receiving core that outside of Devontae Smith, who is going to be a very talented player for the future, there's a lot of question marks. Rager is not a fan favorite. Has a lot of drops. Definitely a lot of questions there. I think Olave is a great fit for the Eagles here. And at 19, you really can't go wrong with this pick. Him and uh, Devontae Smith two, would be two of the top runners in the league. I mean, that'd be a pretty ridiculous pairing. Moving to the number 20, there's still quarterbacks on the board. But they just signed Mitch Trubisky, the Steelers, that is. What is the pick here for Mike Tomlin's bunch? 
So the Steelers sign of Mitch Trubisky definitely sort of throws a wrench into this. You know, they could take a quarterback here. Malik Willis would probably be the quarterback I'd take about the Steelers, but I think they have more important needs on the offensive line. They're going with Bahad, Bahad Rami from Central Michigan. Very strong tackle, very talented player. Been rising on people's boards over the last couple weeks. You know, he was more of a late late first round, early second round in a lot of mock drafts. Now he fits in at 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think this would be a great pick. They picked a running back last year. You want to be able to get your running back to pick up some ground game. If Mitch Trubisky is the future, considering he's on a two-year deal, maybe he's just a stopgap to get a better quarterback. I think this is a good pick. You want to protect your quarterback, want to protect your running back. And considering they already have three other – three, they also have Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins, I think they're going to go someplace else with this pick. Quarterback is still an option, but for me, it's got to be on the offensive line. I think this is a better fit. I feel like they are really interested in Trubisky. That's why they brought him on a two-year deal. I think quarterback kind of gets ruled out here. He was available, but that's kind of that's that's an important move to me to bring in Trubisky. Ramin, the long arms, very powerful, versatile, quick hands, good footwork. The technique for only playing two years at tackle is pretty phenomenal because, of course, he was a former tight end. I think he even played quarterback in high school too. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, he's not even a project player at this point. He's progressed so tremendously. He shined. At the Senior Bowl, people were happy with his combine. Ramin there at 20. That'd be a really good pick. Moving to number 21, New England Patriots. I think N'Kobe Dean just screams New England Patriots. This is a Bill Belichick type of player. Great range, very strong, um, phenomenal run blocker. Of course, he's not the biggest, but I think overall from a skill set standpoint, a leadership standpoint, he is phenomenal. Yeah, I think this is a perfect fit. You, you talk about kind of the uh, Bill Belichick player. I think the fit – is absolutely perfect here in New England. I really like the Kobe Dean to the Pats. Like you said, the size is a bit of a question, 5'11", 230, definitely a bit questionable there. But I think the Kobe Dean's a very talented linebacker. I'm really interested to see what he can do. I think this would be a great pick for the Patriots. You know, Patriots, people have talked about them potentially going wide receiver here at 21 with some good names left on the board. But I think linebacker might be a better pick for them, and I think the Kobe Dean falling to 21 would be ex- exactly what the Patriots want to see on draft day. Moving to 22, the Green Bay Packers, Devontae Adams, traded to Las Vegas. Now, for years, I've been saying Adams would end up in a Raider uniform with Derek Carr. I didn't think it would happen via trade, but he allegedly won it out, and I think they got a pretty good haul for him. They get a first-round pick in return. His replacement, I think, is the only way to go here with this pick. Yeah, I think Traylon Burks, the wide receiver from Arkansas, is a great fit to replace Devontae Adams. You got to replace that production somewhere. Burks had a great season. The tape is phenomenal, especially against Alabama. He did it in multiple different ways against Alabama. Jump ball, physical wide receiver. I think he's very underrated compared to some of the wide receivers in this class. I love Traylon Burks. And if he can go to Green Bay Packers, have Aaron Rodgers throw into him, the sky's the limit. This is a great pick for the Packers. They did really well for themselves in this trade if they can take Traylon Burks here at 22. Some people are kind of worried about his combine. It wasn't great, of course, a 4 5 5 a 33-inch vertical. But he plays much faster and much taller than that on film. He's, a, he's not a great route runner, but he's very physical, top-notch body control, long strides in his run. Um, and he can go up and catch a ball. I don't care who your cornerback is. He's shown that on multiple occasions, a three, 33 inch vertical. No, it's not very impressive, especially when I think, uh, what was it, Davis had a 32? You know, that's not great. But that doesn't agree with the film I saw. So I'm not really sure what happened on Combine Day. But Burks, I think he's a terrific player. Moving to 23, I think the Cardinals need to go with Tyler Linderbaum here to shore up that interior O line. Another guy who's very fundamentally sound. He's not very big. His size is a bit of a concern, 6'3", 290. But he's a phenomenal center against the run and pass protection. Um, positional value drops him here to the late 20s. I think Tyler Endermont, he is a great player. He's going to be a great star in the NFL, maybe a Zach Martin type of impact for Arizona. Yeah, I think this is a great pick for the Cardinals. He's fallen a little bit in some mock drafts recently due to some of the moves from the combine. I like Linderbaum a lot. The Cardinals, they have a very strong roster here. I think this is a good fit for them, throw him on that offensive line, maybe play him at center. This works for me. I think Tyler Linderbaum is a very talented player out of Iowa. This is a good pick for the Cardinals. Moving to 24, the Dallas Cowboys. Amari Cooper got traded to Cleveland, so receiver is certainly a bit of a need because Cedric Wilson's also gone. But you're looking at the defense here for Dallas. What's the selection? I love the Cowboys' defense. I love the work they've been doing on it. I think they can add a safety here in Lewis Sign from Georgia, very talented player. When you get a guy on the defensive side of the ball from Georgia, he's going to be talented. He's going to be a really strong player. And I think this is a great fit for the Cowboys. They haven't had a very good defense for the last couple of years. They took Micah Parsons last year, very talented pick. That worked out really well. I think they keep adding to the defense. I think Sign's a really good pick, very strong safety. I think this is a great fit in Dallas, and this works out really well for them. He lays the boom. That's what Lewis Sign does. He's a terrific hitter. 
has a little bit of work to do in coverage, but from a physicality standpoint and a hard playmaker, you know, that's what he does. He's a hard player, lays the boom, phenomenal player. I think uh, safety's a big need for Dallas. I don't think Sign's the best fit out of the safeties, but you're really high on Sign, so I approve of Dallas going with Lewis as well. Number 25, the Bills. They added Vaughn Miller, cut Cole Beasley. Those were really the only new moves. You know, Mitch Trubisky left, and they just traded for Case Keenum at backup. So this roster, pretty solid. Devontae Wyatt, I think, is the pick. Of course, we had Jordan Davis going to them and all of our other mocks, but his Georgia counterpart won't be too shabby either. Yeah, I think Devontae Wyatt's a very talented player. The Bills have such a strong roster. They're clearly one of the favorites in the, in the AFC. You get a guy like Devontae Wyatt in there, could work on him, get him in the, get him comfortable in the NFL, bit of a project work on him. I think Wyatt's a great player, very strong player from Georgia. That defense, again, you know, another player comes off the Georgia defense, national championship winning team. They were very strong on the defensive side of the ball. Kirby Smart knows what he's doing with defense and building those players. The Bills get a very talented player here. I think this is a great fit. And Buffalo, they only get better here in the draft. They made some good moves this offseason, like you said, getting Von Miller, maybe a bit pricey. That defense is going to be scary in New- in upstate New York. This is a great fit for me. They were already in top-ranked defense in numerous categories last year, too. Wyatt, um, he's not as polished as a – run stopper as Davis is, but I'd say he's a much better pass rusher, so that's certainly a plus for them. This would be a pretty good sneaky pick, I think, for Buffalo to go Wyatt there at 25. Tennessee at 26. What do you think Mike Rabel adds to his offense or defense? So I think the defense needs some help. I think they need a cornerback. I'm looking at Kamar Kilar Elam from Florida. Had a bit of an up and down year this year, some questionable film, but I think he's a very talented player, and I think he fits really well into Tennessee. They could really use a cornerback Mike Vrabel has a good roster, very strong team. They're they're getting close to contending status. I, w- I really like what they're doing in Nashville, and I think this is a great fit for them. Elon would be a really good pick here at 26. Yeah, he's not very consistent. That's only his biggest knock. Get to the NFL, coach him up a bit. Uh, you help that and his tackling. Outside of that, the negatives aren't – they're far and few. You know, range is great. The instincts are top-notch. He's very aggressive, very good vertical speed. I like his ball skills. He was kind of one of the lone bright spots on a Florida defense that was lackluster, to say the least, this season. That's a big need for the Titans. Janoris Jenkins is not good. He's now a free agent, so they certainly – PFF, for some reason, doesn't have corner as a big need. I don't know why. They cut Adore Jackson a couple years ago, too. So, they're secondary. It's had some – it needs some pieces, to say the less. They went Caleb Farley last year in the first round. I think Elon would certainly be a nice compliment. I think Farley was hurt most of the year. So, Titans going corner at 26 seems like the best bet. The Bucks at 27. Heck of an offseason for them. Tom Brady came back. I don't think many people were really shocked. Ally Marpet did retire. He's not coming back. Alex Kappa, he's gone. Ryan Jensen did come back. So outside of Tom Brady, Chris Godwin getting an extension. The, the center of attention really been this interior line. I think Zion Johnson would be a pick we both love here at 27. They got Tristan Wirfs a couple of years ago. Zion Johnson might be the guard of Tristan Wirfs. That's the type of size, build, and potential impact he has for this offense. Yeah, I love Zion Johnson, someone that's got some benefit from his combine, you know, 6'3", 312. I think he's a very talented player, been rising a lot of boards here. I think this is a perfect fit in Tampa. Like you said, could play that guard role. I think he'd be a really good fit for them. You know, bringing Tom Brady back, obviously that means the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are still contending. We had them taking a quarterback here potentially with the question marks of Brady retiring, but it didn't shock me. I don't think it shocked you that Brady came back. And getting a guy like Zion Johnson there is a really good pick at 27. This fits really well for me in the Bucs. Yeah, he's pretty smooth in pass protection, very sturdy against the run. He's very strong, too, holds up well against bull rushers. This would be an all-rookie selection, no doubt, if he ended up in Tampa Bay. I think Zion Johnson, he's certainly continuing to climb boards. Um, you know, a couple of months ago, he wasn't even in the first two rounds. Now I think he'll crack into the back end of the first round here. That leads us to 28, Green Bay Packers. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility they go two receivers here in this first round. But outside of Sky Moore, maybe Jahan Dotson. There's no one I'm really screaming overdraft here at 28, especially when you already got a good receiver a few picks earlier. Where's Green Bay going? Is This kind of new era starts in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers re-signing, but Devontae Adams leaving. Yeah, I think they can definitely get a wide receiver in the second round, maybe George Pickens late in the draft. But I think here at 28, they're going to go Trevor Penning, the tackle from Northern Iowa. Very impressive player, you know, had a really good year at, at Northern Iowa. Very impressive for him as a tackle. I think he'd be a great fit for them. You want to protect Aaron Rodgers considering how much money you just invested in a record contract. you got to give him some protection on the offensive line. And considering the value available left, I think Penning would be a really good fit for Green Bay Packers, and this would be a really nice pickup for them. 
Yeah, it says right here on PFF, he had a 99.9 run blocking grade last year. Um, that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but overall on tape, he's quick off the ball. He's got great arm length, 6'7", 327, that big frame and the length allows him to shine as a pass or a run blocker. But I think he's got a good balance of strength and athleticism as well that's going to allow him to hold up against the pass. Trevor Penning, kind of like we heard Bernard Bauman, um, guys coming from these lower-level schools that are the top tackles in the draft. So that would be a good pickup, especially with uh, Billy Turner leaving. Uh, he got cut. He was a rotational guy. The offensive line needs a little bit of help. Moving to 29, the Dolphins. Um, I don't know. This took a minute to make the selection, but I think – coming to the conclusion that Jahan Dotson should be the selection was the right way to go. Um, Jalen Waddle, he's obviously going to be a great player for them. They don't really have an outside threat. Devontae Parker, you know, he's kind of a middle-of-the-pack type of pass catcher. Jahan Dotson, though, has a really high ceiling, I think. He doesn't overwhelm you with size or speed, but great hesitation, fluid route runner. The acceleration is pretty good. Not a 50-50 ball guy, but he has a strong hands. Um, he's somehow a big play threat despite not being very elusive or a 50 ball guy. So pretty, pretty mixed take for me on Dotson. It's kind of contradicting. I know, but when you watch the tape, that's exactly what you see. Yeah. I love Jahan Dotson. I thought, I think the, the Dolphins had to go with wide receiver here too. Tonga Bailoa gets a lot of hate from the media about his performance, but you got to give him weapons to throw to. We had Alave going here in previous mock drafts. Alave no longer on the board. I think Dotson's a great fit. I love some of his tape. At times, his tape definitely is questionable, but I look at the game against Auburn earlier in the year. Very impressive, especially the catch in the end zone late in that game. I think Jahan Dotson's a very talented player. I love the acceleration. I love the hands. I think this is a great fit for the Dolphins at 29. I think Jahan Dotson is very underrated. I, I know you're not as high as him as I am. I like Jahan Dotson a lot. I think this would be a great fit for the Dolphins. Yeah, it's just it's not that I'm not high on him. It's just that, you know, um, the stuff I said is very contradictory. That's what I see. It's kind of kind of odd, but I think he'll have a pretty solid career at the NFL. He's a big he's a big play threat. So um, the PFF has the offensive line as a need for them. I don't know. It is, but at the same time, it's not because they really invested in that. They already have a lot of guys. They just brought in Connor Williams as well. So I don't think fixing the issue is to bring in another offensive lineman, at least here in the first round. So Dotson, I think, would be the good selection here. Moving to number 30, Kansas City. They just added Juju Smith. So I think you can take receiver off the board, even though I do think a few of those guys are free agents. And I think Byron Pringle just left as well. So they could definitely go receiver here, but I don't think that's the way to go in the first round. Yeah, receiver, I think getting Juju Smith shoots here kind of eases some of those question marks. But cornerback is an area that they could really use some help. And I think Daxon Hill out of Michigan would be a really solid pick here. I really like his film as well. Very talented player out of Michigan. I like what he can do. I think this would be a really good fit for the Chiefs. I like them picking up Juju Smith shoots I think that will work out well for them. And getting a guy like Daxton Hill with the 30th overall pick will be a very solid pickup for them. Yeah, I love this pick, Daxton Hill, because he's showed that he can play as a corner, mainly in the slot as well. Closing Burks versus the run as a tackler as well. Great athlete. Limited experience, too. They just brought in Justin Reed to replace Tyree Matthew, so they don't exactly need him to come in and be an immediate impact starter. But I love this pick. I think it would be an A-plus because you could put him at corner, slot, put him at safety. And his limited experience, not having to be pressed into action right away, that's going to do dividends for this defense. Daxton Hill, a high upside player long-term. I think that would be a very good pickup for Kansas City. They look to get back to their fifth straight AFC conference game, title game, that is. Looking at 31, the Bengals, they've made some waves on the offensive line. Alex Kappa, they brought him over from Tampa. Well, L. Collins is allegedly looking to go there. He's going to be a post-June 1st cut. I think that's probably where he'll end up. Bengals are paying attention to their offensive line and free agency. That's good. They need to do so in the draft, though, still. That's how bad this unit was. Yeah, the offensive line was terrible. Joe Burrow got knocked around. When you have a player like him, so talented, you have to protect him, make sure he doesn't get injured. I think Kenyon Green here at 31 is such a great pick for them. They're going to have to add offensive line help. I know they've been working on their free agency. We just touched on that. But they need to do a whole lot of work. And considering what's left, I think Kenyon Green, you know, he had a questionable combine. And in general, there's some some worries about him in general. Had, didn't have the best season with Texas A&M, but I think this is a really decent pick here at 31. There were some players that we had them taking earlier drafts that are no longer on the board. I think Kenyon Green will be a decent pickup for the Bengals. And, you know, you got to protect your assets here. you got to protect Joe Burrow. That's the key to this draft. they got to take an offensive line player here. I think Kenyon Green is the pick. Yeah, the interior linemen for A&M have kind of fallen down the boards as the months have went on. DeMarvin Leal's exited the first round. Kenyon Green towards the back end of it here. But, yeah, he's versatile. I think guard's probably where he's going to be at the next level. Very good movement skills. You know, he does, he's not top-notch, at least projected at the next level in any area, like run or pass blocking. But he's very sturdy in both of those areas. He's not bad whatsoever. Very moderate blocker, I'd say, in both categories. And the potential is pretty high, I'd say, for him. 
versatility is really impressive. Being 6'4", 325, I think his athleticism is pretty impressive. That leads us to 32. The Lions here, there's a lot of quarterbacks on the board. We haven't went, went, went in this first round. Jared Goff has three years on his deal left. This roster needs a lot of help. Drafting quarterback does not make any sets one bit, especially since Jared Goff is a winner. and He's a guy that can really more than bridge you into the future. I think that's a guy that could get you to the playoffs if you surround him with enough talent. QB is not the pick for me. Is it for you? No, QB is not the pick here. I've seen a couple mock drafts taking Kenny Pickett. I don't think that's the right idea here. I think they need to add some help. And like I was saying earlier, their edge rushing core is so terrible. I'm going to have him go edge rushing twice in this first round. Arnold Ebikidi out of Penn State. I love his film. Very talented player. Underrated edge rusher. A lot of people have question marks about him. I think this is a great fit for the Lions. They could really use the help. Getting a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau and Ebikidi in the first round. Two very talented edge rushers. I think that would be a really, really strong way to go for the Lions. They need help on a lot of different sides of the ball. Wide receiver is also something you can go here, but considering the talent that's left, I don't think there's anything worth taking with a 32 overall pick right now, considering Dotson's off the board now. I think Ebikidi here would be a very strong player, also a Penn State player. I think this works well for the Lions. Yeah, the emergence of Monter St. Brown. They just signed DJ Chark. Receiver, still a big need, but I think they could pass up or what pass catcher here at 32 and go Ebikidi. The pass rush really is that bad. I think they should probably take both of these picks here and go with some pass rush help. Trey Flowers is obviously not very good with them. Injuries didn't help help him either, but he was getting paid a lot of money, did not produce one bit. He's now gone. Time to build the trenches up a bit for Detroit. Very interesting NFL offseason so far. Very fun mock draft we did today, Nick. We'll do another one here short, soon. I don't know when, but um, very crazy offseason. What are your thoughts so far on the moves that have happened? I think the Deshaun Watson move is the biggest move so far for me. It was a question of whether or not he was going to get traded. We knew he was going to get traded. It was just when and where with everything that was going on off the field for him, a lot of issues that kind of got settled. He ends up in Cleveland. I think that's a great fit for the Browns. They give away their first first round pick to the Texans who could really use the help. And they can get a guy like Garrett Wilson, with the 13 overall pick and get rid of a headache in Watson. I think that's a great draft considering they're also going to potentially get K, uh, Evan Neal with the third pick. I think the Texans have a really strong draft. And in general, there's been a lot of interesting moves this, this off season, a lot of shakes up shakeups. It could be really interesting to see how these play out. And the last thing we'll address is we didn't go any quarterbacks in this mock. And the, one of the biggest reasons why is because the teams that needed quarterbacks, they didn't go with one. I don't think Atlanta should reach at eight. And um, Seattle, I don't think they should go with one at nine. And NFL scouts after the after the senior bowl didn't feel like there was any prospects worth taking in the first round. I think Malik Willis is certainly, after the combine, skyrocketing up boards a bit. But the moves made in the offseason so far, they don't really – it doesn't make much sense to take a quarterback here in the first round. I think second round, there'll, there'll be a lot of QB needy teams. I think we are guaranteed to see at least one or two, though, taken in the first round. Somebody's going to be eager to trade up and get the future. But so far, I'm not really feeling that. Maybe things will change in the next month. I agree. Maybe someone drop, trades down, gets somebody at a quarterback. You know, maybe the Falcons try and get out of eight. But I don't know about that. I think Stingley would be a better pick for them. Definitely a weaker quarterback class. Malik Willis is definitely the best of the quarterbacks. The Steelers could potentially go there, but considering of their moves with Trubisky, I don't think that's the decision for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But we could see a couple come off the board in the second round for sure. Let's wrap everything up for today's episode, guys. Nick, as always, appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much, yeah. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.